हेलो एवरीवन दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट स्टर्नम स्टर्नम इट इज अ फ्लैट बोन एंड इट इज अबाउट सेवन सेंटीमीटर लॉन्ग पार्ट्स वाइज इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री पार्ट्स अपर क्वार्टनिकुलर पार्ट इट्स अ मैनोब्रियम आफ्टर दैट बॉडी एंड लोअर मोस्ट पॉइंटेड पार्ट इट्स अ जिफोइड प्रोसेस मैनोब्रियम बॉडी एंड जिफोइड प्रोसेस इट्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज एपिस्टर्नम मेजोस्टर्नम एंड मेटास्टर्नम एनाटॉमिकल पोजिशन वाइज मैनोब्रियम इट इज अटैच विद द बॉडी बाय दिस ट्रांसवर्स रीज इट इज टर्नल ऑफ टर्नल एंगल और एंगल ऑफ लुइज एनाटॉमिकल पोजिशन वाइज इट इज स्लाइटली डाउनवर्ड एंड स्लाइटली इंक्लाइंड फॉरवर्ड इंक्लाइंड फॉरवर्ड एंड डाउनवर्ड्स लेट स्टार्ट वन बाय वन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मैनुब्रियम मैनुब्रियम इट इज अ क्वाड्रिलेटरल इन शेप क्वाड्रेंगुलर इन शेप इट हैज अ टू सरफेस एंटीरियर रफ सरफेस एंड पोस्टीरियर स्मूथ सरफेस एंटीरियर रफ एंड पोस्टीरियर स्मूथ सरफेस फोर बॉर्डर सुपीरियर बॉर्डर इन्फीरियर बॉर्डर टू लेटरल बॉर्डर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंटीरियर रफ सरफेस इट प्रोवाइड्स अटैचमेंट वाइज द टू इम्पॉर्टेंट स्ट्रक्चर्स स्टर्नल हेड ऑफ स्टर्नो क्लेडो मेस्टोइड मसल एंड पेक्टोरालिस मेजर मसल दिस टू मसल्स आर अराइज फ्रॉम एंटीरियर रफ सरफेस ऑफ मैनुब्रियम सुपीरियर बॉर्डर ऑफ द मैनुब्रियम इट इज अ थीक बॉर्डर इन अ सेंट्रल पार्ट इट हैज अ नोच दैट इज स्टर्नल नोच और जुगुलर नोच ऑन ईच साइड ऑफ द स्टर्नल नोच देर इज अ फैसेट फॉर द आर्टिकुलेशन ऑफ क्लेविकल सो क्लेविकुलर फैसेट सो क्लेविकल अटैच ऑन ईच साइड ऑफ स्टर्नल नोच एंड फॉर्म स्टर्नो क्लेविकुलर जॉइंट स्टर्नो क्लेविकुलर जॉइंट इट इज अ सैडल वेराइटी ऑफ साइनोवियल जॉइंट सो एंटीरियर रफ सरफेस दैट प्रोवाइड स्पेक्टोरालिस मेजर एंड स्टर्नो क्लेडो मेस्टोइड मसल एंड पोस्टीरियर स्मूथ सरफेस अगेन इट विल प्रोवाइड टू मसल अटैचमेंट अपर पार्ट देर इज अटैचमेंट ऑफ स्टर्नो हाइड एट द लेवल ऑफ क्लेविकुलर फैसेट एंड द लोअर पार्ट एट द लेवल ऑफ द अटैचमेंट ऑफ फर्स्ट कॉन्ट्रल कार्टिलेज ऑफ द फर्स्ट रीप स्टर्नो थाइरोइड मसल स्टर्नो हाइड स्टर्नो थाइरोइड स्टर्नो हाइड स्टर्नो थाइरोइड मसल सो टू मसल्स आर अटैच ऑन एंटीरियर रफ सरफेस एंड टू मसल्स आर अटैच ऑन पोस्टीरियर स्मूथ सरफेस सुपीरियर रफ बॉर्डर हैव अ जुगुलर नोच ऑन ईच साइड ऑफ द जुगुलर नोच देर इज अ क्लेविकुलर फैसेट फॉर द आर्टिकुलेशन ऑफ द क्लेविकल नाउ कम टू द लेटरल बॉर्डर नाउ लेटरल बॉर्डर हैव अ अगेन टू फैसेट्स अपर पार्ट हैव अ फुल फैसेट दैट इज आर्टिकुलेट विद द फर्स्ट कॉन्ट्रल कार्टिलेज and the lower most part of the lateral border have a one demi facet or the half facet the remaining half facet it is present in the body and this half facet that articulate with the second costal cartilage so this is the all about the border superior border lateral border inferior border that articulate with the upper border of body of the sternum and form sterno sternal angle or angle of lewis this one is the sternal angle and angle of lewis and it's a secondary cartilaginous joint sternal angle or angle of lewis it is represented by one transverse ridge it is a secondary cartilaginous joint manubrio sternal joint or secondary cartilaginous joint some clinical significance of this sternal angle or angle of lewis is there so most important clinical significance of this tunnel angle it is for counting the ribs because at this level of the transverse ribs or sternal angle the second costal cartilage is attached 
that means second rib is attached on each side of this tunnel angle so we can easily count the ribs subsequently from this tunnel angle so most important clinical significance of this tunnel angle is counting the ribs on posterior surface of this at the level of this tunnel angle there are so many another clinical significance or anatomical significance or changes are there because this level it separates the superior mediastinum from the inferior mediastinum and this tunnel angle or angle of Lewis it is at the level between the T4 and T5 so it separates superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum which are the changes are occur at this level ascending aorta it is end at this level arch of aorta it is beginning at this level and arch of aorta ends at this level after that descending aorta it begins from this sternal angle on posterior surface trachea which is bifurcate at this level at the level of sternal angle pulmonary trunk divides into the two branches right and left pulmonary artery at this level so these are the so anatomical changes which occur at the posterior surface of the sternal angle but most important clinical significance is counting the ribs okay so after the manubrium the second part it's a body again anterior rough surface posterior smooth surface and on each side of the body there is a facet for the articulation of the coastal cartilage most upper part there is a demi facet for the second coastal cartilage after that third fourth fifth sixth and lower most facet that is for the seventh coastal cartilage lower most part that articulate with the seventh coastal cartilage so body it is extended from second to seventh coastal cartilage okay anterior rough part it provides the attachment of pectoralis major muscle on each side there is attachment of origin of pectoralis major muscle posterior smooth part the lower most part it provides the attachment of sternocostalis muscle but in upper part on each side of the midline on the right side there is a relation with the pleura the area related with the right pleura and on the left side the upper half on each side of the midline the upper half on left side it is related with the left pleura but lower part it is related with the bare area of pericardium or it is related with the heart so it is a bare area of the pericardium and lower most part on each side of the midline it is provides the attachment of sternocostalis muscle so anterior rough surface pectoralis major on each side and lower posterior smooth surface on each side there is a sternocostalis muscles and pleural reflection right pleural reflection left pleural reflection and lower part for the bare area of pericardium so this is the attachment of the body and on each side there is that is the attachment of coastal cartilage mochis for coastal cartilage anterior rough surface it represented by three transverse rays one two and three transverse rays that means body of the sternum it is developed by the four segment and this each segment it is known as a sternebri so this all four sternebri joined by this three transverse ridge okay and the lower most part the lower most part it is a gyphoid process the size and the shape of the gyphoid process it is a variable it is a different in each sternum sometimes it is a bifid in nature it is a bifid in nature or it may be bifid or perforated and lower most part is a pointed so this is the gyphoid process attachment wise the anterior surface of the gyphoid process that provides the attachment of rectus abdominis insertion of middle fiber of rectus abdominis muscle and posterior surface posterior surface of the gyphoid process that provides the attachment of diaphragm diaphragm so anterior surface rectus abdominis insertion of rectus abdominis and posterior surface gives origin to the fiber of diaphragm 
so this is the all about the gford process now joint wise which are the joints form in this sternum so we already discuss this is the clavicular facet so clavicle articulate with the manubrium and forms a manubrio clavicular sterno clavicular joint at here that is a saddle variety of synovial joint after that manubrio sternal joint it is a secondary cartilaginous joint this is the facet on side of the manubrium that is from for the first costal cartilage so that is the primary cartilaginous joint so these are the joint and the last this one from for the body and the gifford process it is again primary cartilaginous joint so this is the all about the sternum applied or clinical important or clinical significance wise sternal puncture the terminology is sternal puncture so manubrium sterni this one manubrium sterni is the preferred site for bone marrow aspiration because it is a subcutaneous and it is readily accessible for the puncture so bone marrow sample is required for the hematological examination so this manubrium sterni is the important part for the sternal puncture for the bone marrow aspiration but where to do this sternal puncture it's better to do the sternal puncture in upper part of the manubrium why because to avoid the injury to the arch of aorta which lies just behind the manubrium in a lower part arch of aorta so sternal puncture preferred side is upper part of manubrium upper part of manubrium sometimes in a surgical approach whenever the surgical operations are needed for the heart and the great blood vessels we have to do the mid sternotomy mid sternotomy so mid sternotomy is required in a surgical approach to assess the heart and great blood vessels two more clinical anatomy or clinical terminology is there that is the funnel chest or pectus excavatum it is a abnormal shape of the thoracic cage in a funnel chest it is abnormal shape of thoracic cage in which chest is compressed antero posteriorly antero posteriorly chest is compressed antero posteriorly and sternum is pushed backward by the overgrowth of the ribs and it may compress the heart that is the funnel chest or pectus excavatum now opposite to that condition the second chest that is a pigeon chest or pectus carinatum it is an abnormal shape of the thoracic cage in which the chest is compressed from side to side chest is compressed from side to side and in that condition sternum project forward and downward forward and downwards it like a kneel of boat it like a kneel of boat or you can also say that pigeon chest so these are this is the all about the clinical significance of the sternum sternal puncture mid sternotomy funnel chest pigeon chest okay thank you